Our next speaker is the executive producer and creator of the afternoon show Twin Cities Live on 5 Eyewitness News. So she may be very familiar to all of you. She leads a team of 10 creatives to produce the content for a show and supervises all operations, including the on-air talent, the marketing efforts, and the sales initiatives. Uh, Mandy's first job was as a reporter for the NBC affiliate in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And after a few years, she decided to move into producing and left to join the morning show at CARE 11. Mandy's career took a different turn, though, when she was hired as a field producer for the nationally syndicated kids science show Dragonfly TV on PBS. She's all over the place, so busy. When the opportunity came to start Twin Cities Live, Mandy knew it was a once in a lifetime offer. And if you've seen the show, it is fabulous. The show has celebrated nine years uh, on air this April, right now. And she is a graduate of St. Ben's with a communications degree in 2004 and serves on the CSB alumni board. So ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome Mandy Tadek. First of all, I have like note cards here, um, and I'm just gonna throw these out because the last, I mean, hello, aren't, isn't that, aren't these students so talented? I'm like, I don't need these. I'm just gonna go off the cuff. The worst part about it is gonna be this presentation, this PowerPoint, and I'm not gonna promise you it's gonna line up perfectly because I tend to kind of just go, so. Um, so first of all, I wanna kind of debunk that bio that you just gave of me. Yes, everything in there is true. I did all those jobs. They are not as fancy, as glamorous as they seem, though. I'm gonna tell you that. So I'm gonna break all your notions about what you think television is right now and break it down for you now and tell you what the real story is. And it's all good, and it's all fun, and I still love it, and it's great, but it's really not exactly what it all appears inside that little magic box. So, yes, um, I graduated from St. Ben's in 2004. I actually graduated in the December of 2003 because I was eager to get going in television. Um, I always wanted to work in television, and a lot of people ask me, then why did you go to St. Ben's? Uh, which is a good question, because it was a lot of money to spend um, to go, and there's really great journalism schools, and the U of M here is, is one of the best. Um, I knew that I didn't want to just get a degree in specifically in something technical. I knew I would need a knowledge of a lot of things to work in television. And honestly, my boyfriend was a Johnny football player. So it seemed like a good idea, you know, at the time. And they gave me some scholarship money and it wasn't too far away from home. But what I learned at St. Penn's were a lot of valuable skills that I think really made me successful in television. So yes, I worked at WEAU TV 13 in Eau Claire, Wisconsin as a reporter, and I did the weather, and I wore f cheap suits, and it was great, and guess how much money I made? $17,000 a year. Less than, I, or less than I paid in tuition at the time. It was like 21,000 then, it's way more now, but my parents were like, you have two years, that's it. Um, but it was like grad school. I learned everything. Um, I did everything. I, like I said, I did the weather. I shot. I edited. I produced. Um, and that's where I really learned that producing was what I wanted to do. I wasn't passionate. This is not what I usually do is go up in front of people. Um, I like to be directing behind the scenes. I'm usually doing what our lovely Jake is doing and wrapping people up and running the show behind the scenes. So. I really learned though a lot about myself and I learned that I really am more of a producer type. So I went back to my roots and I say that because I was an intern for three years at CARE 11, unpaid, all of it. So far this TV career has been very lucrative, right, in this story. No. Um, so um, worked at CARE 11 as a morning show producer, worked with Kim Minsley and Tim McNiff at the time, learned a ton, but guess what the hours were? The pay was better, doubled the pay, still not great, right, but doubled it. Um, and I say that because, again, this is the reality of television. It's not glamorous when you start out. Um, and, but my hours were 11 at night until 7 in the morning. And I did that for two and a half years, and it, it almost killed me. I'm not telling can you. It was, it was tough, and it was tough because I was like 23, 24, and that's when you want to go out with your friends, and you want to go have fun, you want to go to happy hour, and you don't have kids, and it was tough. But it was the great boot camp that really taught me about how to produce good television. CARE is an amazing station um, across the country. It's one of the best. And so from there, 
um, I, my, that's when my career took a really big turn. And that's when I really listened inside to myself and said, I thought I'd be at CARE forever. I thought I'd take over and be the news director and run the world. And then I was just unhappy. And I was like, this isn't what I want to do. This isn't me. I like fun. I like restaurants. I like sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> so a friend of a friend told me about a job at Twin Cities Public Television working on a kid's science show called Dragonfly TV. And I applied for the job, and it was the best decision I ever made. I met a ton of great people. I learned that television isn't just news. There is this other side of it called lifestyle programming. Wow, this is fun. Um, news is great, and news is an incredible career, but it wasn't for me. Um, and I worked there for a year, and when that contract was up, I had no job. And I was going to move to New York or LA um, to work in television. And then this little opportunity called Twin Cities Live came up. Um, and I met it, met someone at KSTP. And long story short, they had me put together a story pitch. And about seven interviews later, they offered me the job. And guess how old I was? 25. Had I ever started a show? Nope. <laughs> but I did it. And coming up here, and I'm, again, the timing's not going to come up, is going to be a clip from our very first show, which launched about nine months after I started. Um, and it's with our original host, John Hansen and Rebecca Wood. John Hansen, uh, another untraditional story. We found him. Um, I decided, let's have a casting call and let anybody that wants to come in addition to be this host of the show, because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> And I found one. And he was really good. And he was with us for five years. So here's a little example. This is the very first show. Rebecca Wood. We're here. Welcome to Twin Cities Live, the first ever Twin Cities Live. We really appreciate you joining us this afternoon. Are you nervous? Uh, you know, I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready to go. And we've been getting ready for a long, long time for this show. So me longer than you, actually. Yeah, a lot we'll longer. Hear more about that, but you? I'm Rebecca Wood. First of all, I suppose we uh, should introduce ourselves. I'm Rebecca Wood. This is John Hansen. I'm John Hansen. Nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, that's what they call bad TV. <laughs> I'll say that now, and I watch it and I'm cringe, and I go, ugh, yuck. But, so, anyways, I go back to set, so those seven interviews was asked to create this show. Um, really, they didn't think it'd make it more than two years. Like, no one around the building thought it'd make it more than two years. And guess what? We're celebrating nine years, and it's not going anywhere. So... Today, it's hosted by Steve Patterson and Elizabeth Reese. Um, they are a lot better than those two, but it took us some time, and that was some changes that I had to make. And today, we focus on producing really fun moments and fo producing food, fashion, and fun. And our job is to make people laugh and to make people have a good time. And there's going to be a clip coming up here in some of the crazier moments. Oh, can we go back to that? Can we play that one? Let's get weird. There we go. Uh -huh. Let's get weird. Well, yeah, OK, then. All right, then. Bop, 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 bop. Uh-oh, what are you going to do, duck? Okay. This is the second What's in time here? I've been involved in stuffing a bra for you. So that's how you do it. You don't do an individual part. Sure. That's sort of interesting. I never do that. That's just a waste of time. What's going on, Emily? You have a squirrel in your hair. My dear Elizabeth <laughs> has noodles in her sinuses. This is a dog slash television host hammock. Yeah, so we I all need a hammock every now and again. I just feel strongly that there, an Oreo should not even exist unless it's double stuffed. I'm finding this to be so special. Do you two need to go in the bag? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So that's just a clip. If you haven't seen it, you should watch it. 3 p.m. I know a lot of you might be at school, work, whatever. We also re-air at 1 a.m. for your night owls and new parents. Um, but so we produce moments, not just content. And my job is to really wrangle these two, keep them happy, healthy, um, doing their best, um, and to wrangle this crew too. And this is um, so. This what does an executive producer do? A lot of people don't know. Frankly, didn't really know when I applied for the job either. So um, now I figured it out nine years later. Um, but basically, I manage and develop the people, the content, and the budget for the show. Our budget is about a million dollars for the show, which is really good for a local show. And that's mostly due to my bosses, which are the Hubbards um, and the station is locally owned here in, in this market. So um, uh, this is a picture from, we were at our Grand Casino broadcast. We do remote shows. And so that's a lot of what my time has taken up and is working with sponsors to secure those locations and content and um, do a lot, of, a lot of things there. So yeah, so well, where are we at with timing here? We got a couple minutes left. See, this is where I'm like, I don't want to go over. Um, <laughs> but I think that the biggest thing is that we're, we're nine years in now. The show is very successful, um, but what I've really learned through the years of changing hosts, 
changing content focuses, changing teams. Um, thank God I've remained the same and this, <laughs> because that, thank God I still have a job and it's good, things are going well, but I've learned that um, really authenticity is everything. And that doesn't just go for the content that you see or um, the people that are on it. It goes for really like how I run my staff and how I how we look at, at what we produce. We don't endorse things we don't really like. So when people say, did you really like that food? Yes, if they said they like it, they like it. Because it's really important when you're doing a show, a reality show, especially something that's on you know locally, that, it's, that we're really promoting the good things in this community. And we take that very seriously. Um, the other thing I've learned, and this is I think something that's more, more broad for everybody in whatever industry you're in, is investing in good people, developing good people, keeping good people will bring you good results. And thus, you will have a good time at work. And you will like what you do. So that sounds really simple, but I think talking about earlier about empowerment, I completely agree that you have to empower your people to do well and to, to know that you think they do a good job. And that really has made my team have so much fun in what we do. And I think that's reflected in the content that we produce every day. And last is going back to local TV is a very powerful tool. And it's really important to this community. The Hubbards, like I said, invest a lot of money into this program. And they have a a strong focus in keeping it around. And that's important because we get to influence businesses and how much money they make in small businesses. I came from, my dad owned a small Western store, sold boots and hats, so your rancher over there needs that. I got a hookup here for you. Um, but he, you know, a spot, getting a spot on something on Twin Cities Live that we do a segment and we pick up and do something on his store, you know, would be huge for him. So I take that very seriously and feel very proud um, to work on a show every day that's about the positive things in this community. Um, and I feel very proud to be a Benny that didn't go to a journalism school that still is working in television. So, so thank you for listening. And just want to let you all know, too, that we um, have live studio audiences every Friday. And you're all welcome to come. Just email me and you can come. No, we have ticket sign-ups online, but you can email me and I'll get you in. Um, and we also offer two internships every semester and I've had, I have one Benny back there, Alex, that was my intern who was a rock star. Um, so I'd love to have more Bennies and Johnnies be our interns. It's a great experience to get a little taste of television. Thank you.